would you drive from Malaysia to Germany in a 50-year-old Mercedes? Most of us wouldn't do it, but for this Malaysian it was his childhood dream come true. Meet Sidwai Song, a Malaysian fondly known as Chef on Wheels. He embarked on this adventure, which lasted 108 days. It covered over 25,000 kilometers, spanning 12 countries, including Thailand, Laos, China, Kazakhstan, Russia, Turkey, Germany. Georgia, Romania, Austria, Switzerland, Hungary and Germany. But the trip didn't always go smooth. He had two accidents. His car was stolen and confiscated by the police. Against all odds, he made it, making Malaysia proud. So sit back, relax and enjoy this video, where he shares with you his journey. And in the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you his relation to some of the biggest bands in the world and also what comes next as an award for having succeeded in that journey. What inspired you to go on this journey? It's always in my mind that I want to see the world. When I was young, I couldn't be a pilot, so I probably want to be a sailor. So as you grow older, these things doesn't materialize. So I, at this moment, I felt that you know I should make this trip. You can call it a bucket list or whatever, but I want to do this. I want to do it. How did you plan for hotel, accommodation, roads? Yeah, uh, before that, of course, you, you, to travel over 108 days with the 25,000 kilometers and all that, certain planning has been done. I, I try to save on hotel stays and because when I was traveling, it was in the summer. Hmm. So in Europe especially, there's a lot of campsites that you, you, you can live on. There are very proper, clean campsites that we can proper toilets, proper sanitation. They even have kitchen for you to eat your meal, so I've got no problem with accommodation. We're camping by the road. I met two, <laughs> two wonderful couple. That's cooked for me. It's too awesome. But you know very well that living in Europe, you know, I, I want to speak about Europe because Europe is where the most expenses, uh, most expensive. Yeah, is the thing. Euro to yeah. the ringgit now. Euro. This has, has to be a plan ahead. Uh, of course, with now technology app, you can actually find the cheapest hotel, the, the nearest place. You can plan it out from here already. Correct. Uh, your, 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 your Mercedes was is 50 years old, right? Yes, the model is 115 and it is built in 1974. So it should made it to be like 49 years old. Wow. 49. I have no problems at all aside from a broken muffle, a exhaust pipe, whatever you call. Other than that, it drives smoothly. German technology. No, no issue whatsoever with the car. Any issue with the crossing the borders? Authorities Certain because... countries, okay, give you an example. Seriously, over in Europe, there's no borders. Mm, yeah, there's no borders, then, yeah. that's easy Absolutely. and all that. Once you're in, it's easy. Yes. I would say Turkey and Russia, they are more strict in border controls and all that. They check you. I, I had my car x-ray. I have to go X through it. Yeah, x-ray for weapons, for drugs, I don't know why. I went through all this and of course no problem. They, they want me to take out everything from the car, put the car into an x-ray and check. So there's no problem. So I'm, I'm glad. But these EU authorities help you? Yeah. Are they supportive of your journey? Because they most likely, some of them never met a Malaysian before, right? Yeah. I think they are more curious than want to check on what I'm doing or what I have. And so, of course, language barrier is always there. But we managed to communicate and all that. They want to see, you know, uh, what I have, where have I been. Of course, my car, I have a sticker of all the flags that I travel to. I explain to them I'm from here, going there. And, uh, I always say something about the people and all that. Most of the time, I meet very kind, very friendly people that can offer you help. Especially you come from Malaysia with a 50-year-old car. Did people ask you about Malaysia as you traveled? Oh yes. Surprisingly, I would say that many of them know where Malaysia is. Oh, not like what wow. you all think, you know. It's not like, oh, are you staying up in the trees? And No, definitely not. But of course, when some of them don't know, we try to explain, uh, do you know where Singapore is? Do you uh. know where Thailand is? When they say yes, then we just tell them, yes, we are in between and all this. And also, yes, I bought like hundreds of uh, fridge manacs. It is a good gesture when you meet people along the way. Well, a small little token okay. to, to promote Malaysia to oh, okay. Towers wow. and all that. Yeah. Malaysia? Yeah, I bought all from Malaysia. So when I, I meet people who I think I should give one to them, yeah. do you remember? Malaysia yeah. is always at your heart. 
Yes, definitely. Tell me one of the most amazing experiences you have had when you were traveling. Actually, every day is a very different experience. But what I have encountered is that I lost my car. Oh, I sure. lost, I lost, I lost my car. But it's not really lost. My car got towed away. You know, being a typical Malaysian, you you just like to park wherever you want. So you think you you, you are living in Malaysia and all that. So I, I went to this very nice spot that I, I want to look at the sunset and river. So I thought. Ah, I just parked there for a couple of minutes and all that. I came back and my car was lost. How did you and, feel? Yeah, how do I feel? I thought that's the end of my trip. It was <laughs> in Turkey and I couldn't speak a word of their language, neither they can they speak English and all that. I think uh, the Ahmadi is good to me. <laughs> so yeah, I, I got hold of somebody who, can, who taught me, yeah, you need to go and report to the police and all. Oh, I found out that it was towed away, it was not stolen anyway. So I'm. That, how, how did you learn that? that it was well, there, there are people around who, who saw that my car was towed by the authorities. So Frank, I thought, yeah, easy as that and all that. So I, I went, I, I took a cab and I went, I tried to go to the police station and this taxi driver, uh, halfway through, he says he doesn't know how to go. <laughs> and oh my God, and he doesn't speak English and doesn't speak Turkey and all this. So but anyway, to cut the story short, I finally found the car and that really taught me a good lesson that never leave your car out of sight when you travel around the world. So wow. make sure that you follow the rules. Don't be like a Malaysian that you can park your car anywhere as you like. It's not your grandfather's road, okay? Which you shouldn't so, do anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you cannot, you cannot. So uh, after that, car is always by my side. Uh, by my side, you know? In your side, by your side. <laughs> in your side, by your side. Yeah. Now there was something else, you know, in Austria, police stopped you and nearly oh, yes. confiscated, confiscated, yes. confiscated your car, confiscated right? Confiscated my car and all that. What uh, happened there? It was actually, it is my fault. Okay, mind you, I drove, I, I drove a 1974 car. Of course, it's a really a very old car. And I took for granted that, you know, the, the tires was good, but no, the tires is bald. So I got pulled in by the police and they, they want to do an inspection like what we did here in Puspak Kom. And again, I thought my journey ends there, but thankfully, they let me pass. But two points you mentioned, right? Yes. As an evaluation so form. The, the evaluation form, they came in and tell me, Mr. Sid, two more points, we need to bring your car in again. So it's better that you get the car fixed quickly, get it done. So after paying a hefty fine, I left Austria. That, that is a quite good experience for me. Yeah, and exactly. you're limping now because you had two accidents even. What happened? It's not smooth driving all, all the time, uh, over 108 days and 25,000 kilometers. So the first accident was, well, I would say it's quite minor. I got hit, my car got hit. So this is the car that was involved in the damage and all that. So that's fine. But the second accident, it was a very silly one. I do not really want to go into details because, because it's silly. <laughs> so so uh, let's put it this way, I, I got hit by a car. So I was hospitalized for three days and I... Well, it's an experience also. I get to stay in a world-class hospital. So can you imagine in Switzerland? Switzerland yeah, in Switzerland and all that. I wouldn't want to tell you how much it costs. The insurance is paying for me. Right after that, uh, three days, I got... I told myself, is it the end of my journey? I, I said, no, I, I have... I need to complete it. So I drove from Lutzen with a limping leg. I drove another 1,200 kilometers wow. to Wales. With pain, right? In pain? Pain, really pain. And uh, with no uh, painkillers and all that. So yeah, I made it. 25,000 kilometers, 108 days, 20 countries. And I'm very proud of it. How was it welcome in Germany? The end goal was to visit Mercedes in Germany, right? Yes, one of the itinerary is to visit the birthplace of Mercedes. And uh. of course, I get to meet a lot of Mercedes enthusiasts. It's a must to go for any Mercedes enthusiast to Stuttgart, uh, where the museum is. Beautiful cars from the very first make to the latest one. Yeah, I got a chance, I'm very lucky that I get to, to go to this place. Yes. Did they celebrate you? There was a red carpet on the picture? Not at the museum, but yes, what well, the intention is to meet up with the uh, Mercedes enthusiasts. Yes, I got to go there and yes, I'm proud to say that I'm the first Malaysian to drive from Malaysia all the way to this event space. With a 50-year-old car and... A very old man. A very old man. Hello, my name is Luca yeah. and um, you have to drive on the red carpet, through the red carpet and tell your story. Tell us about you, tell us about your car, tell us about your journey. We're excited to hear it. 
Wir haben hier heute und morgen Gäste aus Malaysia. Die haben einen Weg hinter sich, das ist unfassbar. Großen Applaus. Hi, welcome. Open the doors. Einstein. Sehr gut. So welcome from the big tour. Thank you so much. What's your name? My name is uh, Song, S-O-N-G, and I come from Malaysia. You have been driving with this car from Malaysia to yes, here? I started on the 3rd of uh, July, and it's, by today it's 49 days. I have covered about uh, 20,000 kilometers, and I have traveled like uh, 20 countries. China, uh, Russia, uh, Kazakhstan, Turkey, and finally I'm here. Yeah. What, was it was it difficult to cross the, the, the other countries, uh, China, Kazakhstan, and so on? Uh, most of the countries, they are okay. Okay, I have met many good friends. I have lost my car. I was arrested by the police in Salzburg for bald tires and I had to pay a lot of euros to get it fixed. So, but it's a good experience. I have learned so much from there. But they are all very kind people. It's not finished yet. I'm going back to Switzerland. From Switzerland, I'm going to Paris. Paris, I'm going to uh, Heathrow, I mean, uh, uh, Southampton, UK. And from there, I'll ship the car back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Did anybody warn you about traveling, saying like, hey, you are too old, don't do that? <laughs> My family, of course, initially, they, they were a bit skeptical. They, they, are, they cared for you. They, they care for me and all that, but they know they can't stop me. Stubborn old man, huh? Uh, stubborn, really, <laughs> really a stubborn old man. So I said, don't worry. And uh, of course, I must say that with the new technology now, we can call each other every day. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, FaceTime? Oh, FaceTime, okay. FaceTime with them, and then I'll show them the places that I go and all that. They're very happy. Nice. Yeah, they're very happy. Tell me, I mean, I, you mentioned right now you had a little bit of a companion in your car, the teddy bear, and what happened to your teddy bear. It's yeah. a heartbreaking little yeah. story, okay? It's, well, I'm an old man, but if you tell people I have a teddy bear, you must have been young at heart, yeah. I believe, okay? Uh, I've grown so much with this. I, I call, uh, he has a name, so, and then he's my co-driver, so to a speak. A teddy bear as a co-driver? Yeah, so, you know, if you're driving 24-7 every day and then you, you, you've got nobody to talk to, sometimes really, you, there's, there's nobody to talk to when you're on the road. So you, you try to make, you know, make friends with him and speak, and then you answer yourself. And that's, that's nice, yeah, actually, yeah, isn't it, it? it? People may think I'm crazy, but yeah, this is what I do, actually. Yeah, I, so I think it's a very nice gesture. I believe you believe that as well. Yes. But, the, but then you lost it. Teddy bear, right? Yeah, it's a very sad thing actually. It's what really happened very there? Thing. You know, I was too busy taking photographs and putting him on top of the car. Totally forgot about him when I started the car and I drove off with him on the top. He must have been flung somewhere else and all that. And then I realized uh, he's lost. It's, it's my wife's teddy bear. Oh, yeah. So he's, he's also very sad. It was in Russia, right? It was in Russia. And so most he likely... May, he, may be, he may be flung over in some drain or, or some some fuse now. Or maybe a little girl, a little boy picked it up. Yes, that's the consolation. So probably some girl will, you know, a guy, a little boy will pick him up and as a new owner. Who knows? And the teddy bear was happily ever after living in Russia, learning Russian now, Russian, yeah. and makes the kid happy in Russia. If you have seen that kid and you are watching that, uh, that teddy bear and you see watch that video, please reach out to Yes. He, is, yes, he is. He is. the rightful owner. <laughs> but you had a substitute afterwards, right? Oh uh, yes, yes. I managed to get another two bears. Uh, two, two. Then. Yeah, in the car and all. That. It may sound a bit silly, la, No, but it's then, not. Uh, I, but I give them away eventually. I, you know, along along the along the drive, you meet people, you meet couples, you meet hmm. families and all that. It's very nice to meet you. May I know where are you from? Israel. You're from Israel. Yeah. Okay, it's so nice to meet you. Oh, nice. Nice to meet you. At the bear. Like the <laughs> I met a couple uh, with a daughter. It's so nice. I gave one to them. 
the daughter love it so much. You are a good guy, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you like? You like? <laughs> Just admit it. You are a good guy. <laughs> That's not for me to say. It's for you to say whether I'm okay. a good guy or not. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I say I'm a good guy. I say it's a good guy. Okay. Uh, all right. What What I think was amazing, actually, you didn't take the highways. I, it was not about. It was yeah. not about reaching the destination yeah, fast, yeah, but. Yeah different style of yeah. thinking that carried you along what happened okay first thing first if you if you are going on, on the road i call this a road tour a road tour a overland road tour and all that so if you are going to stuck on the highway you're going to drive on the highway you practically don't see much mm. you know, because it's just zoom by zoom by and all that and it's quite a cost it's costly to actually to pay for the tow yeah so oh, what yeah. i enjoy is that driving through the smaller roads, what we call the trunk roads and all this, enjoy the scenic views. It could be just a, a, a few animals walking by, a shepherd taking care of their sheep. So these are the things that I enjoy. Even in Turkey, I would love to sit around with people, you know, having their tea in the low stools. These are the things I enjoy. Instead of just visiting, like I said earlier, big monuments, you know. Uh, seeing I would the say, parking lots on the highway, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, we passed through some deserts and all that. Ah, the temperature, because when I went there during summer, uh, there was, this is still in China. So, um, temperature can go up to about 40 degrees. Can you imagine how wow. hot it is? And then in the night, it can go way below. I don't know what it was freezing cold. I would say of every country is special mm. in, in terms of their landscape, scenic places. Mm -hmm. Switzerland maybe stands out and all that, you know, the proper clean and all that, but expensive. What are the most expensive part of the overall journey? You're talking about uh, expensive? I would say it's few, mm. guess. Yeah. What I'm paying now is a fraction of what I'm paying over in, 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 in Europe. Actually. In Europe, yeah. it's about two euro, two euro per liter, isn't yes, it? Yes. You are exactly. blessed in Malaysia. Yeah, we are paying like 50 cents. I think it's lesser even, you know, yeah. 40 cents. Yeah, euro. 40, 40 cents. So whenever I fill, a, uh, I fill up a tank, it could be like 100 over here. You can, it, it is 500 over in Europe. So the biggest bulk of expenses comes from the fuel. I can save on food, lodging, I can camp out, live in the car, but not a few. You, you need to pay for a few. Certain countries, especially in Europe, it's very expensive. It's any, any, any country that stands out the most for its beauty, if you were to dare to say something without insulting any of the countries. <laughs> uh, like I said earlier, every country has its own beauty. I and think all so, that. Yeah. You know, like uh, for example, in, in China, of course, nobody leaves China without visiting the, the Great Wall oh, of yours, China. Yeah. You know, things like that. So every, every place in a sense is uh, special. But again, I would say uh, over in Europe, Germany, Switzerland, they are more proper in rules and regulation. You don't mess with them, even car parks and all that. So you, you, you got to follow the rules. You got to follow the rules. And if you were to do it again, what would you do differently? What would change? Get a better car, better equip, equipped car, maybe a four wheel car. Not to say that my German made Mercedes is not good. I wouldn't want to stress it too much. And I'll, I'll probably restore it and keep it. You know? And knowing that this little car, big car, has brought me around. You, you, you wanted to achieve something by traveling with a car to Europe related to donations to oh, yes, the Cancer yes, yes. Society. You tell us a little, so, little bit about that as well. Yeah. I want to make this trip more meaningful. So I got hold of the National Cancer Society. I said, look, I'm going on this trip, 25,000 kilometers and I'd like to raise funds for you and they're very happy that I, I'm going to be part of their fundraising. For every country I go, I try to go to a camp
cancer facility. This is the cancer hospital in Udon Thani. The facilities, the people, the people are really kind, you know. They don't know who am I, but they brought me around, brought me in and showed me what they have. I'm truly very grateful for what they have done. I completed my first visit of cancer hospital in Thailand. This is the uh, Tarakal Abdominal Department and the director is so kind to bring me around and show, us, uh, show me the facilities. I'm so humble. I see also, hey, there's something special here right now. I see you wear a She's Coldplay yeah. t-shirt. Uh, what is the story between you and Coldplay and some other bands? Yes, I'll say something about myself. Uh, I am in the FMB business. Basically, I'm a caterer. I have been in the line in, in food business for like almost two, 40 years. I have done a lot of uh, FMB, anything from running a restaurant, operating a coffee shop. What I'm doing now is that I am a caterer by profession. I cater to celebrities, musicians that come perform over in Malaysia. So yes, I've been serving a lot of celebrity. I'm not a celebrity caterer, but caterer to ce celebrity. So just make it clear. You know, that's okay, so, okay. caterer to, to celebrities. The, not a celebrity caterer. So, okay. so uh, you, you, you name it, almost all that came to Malaysia, I've been serving them Metallica, Guns N' Roses, so, uh, Coldplay, Coldplay, Pink, uh, <laughs> Blackpink, and all that Korean band. Our specialty is that because we know what they want and the people know what we can do, so we click somehow. Mm, that's amazing. Yeah. Now, how can people reach out to you? I have uh, Instagram and also a uh, Facebook page. I'm more uh, more into Facebook. Okay, so I'm putting the link of Facebook you can link, yes. that you can link up to them. That yes. would be wonderful, of course. Yes. And any inquiry for catering, can they come to you as well if they need to? Of because course. you also you're not only serving celebrities, but you oh, also no, serve yeah. as yeah. We, we do quite a number of other other catering also. Yes, right for yes. functions, companies. Functions I uh, also involved in uh, quite a number of CSR uh, jobs and all that events. Uh, people who, who want to do CSR, we, we assist them in, in their initiative, CSR initiative. And, uh, right, that's, right, that's right. That's what we can do. Right. When I got to know Song, I knew that any time there was an emergency somewhere across Malaysia, he took his car. Can I mention the name of the car? Yeah. Chef on Wheels. Can I say that? Yeah. My company's name is Chef on Wheels. Chef on Wheels. I'm also part of uh, the Red Crescent and all that. So you know in Malaysia, the, the floods usually happen at the end of the year and all that. So whenever there's a need, they'll call us up and then uh, not so much of a rescue, but we are in a community service. We, we help, we serve them food, basic food, coffee, noodles and all that for the volunteers and for the victims and all that. Yeah, I've been doing this since 2007. It's wonderful, isn't it? And for that, he definitely needs to have a like, at least on this video. How has the journey through so many countries actually changed you? After 108 days, 22,000 miles, definitely there's some impact on my life, the perspective, the outlook, looking at the world. Trying to different different countries, uh, meeting different cultures and people. Yes, yes, it is. It is something an eye opener for me. You have traveled that length of time. The world is not that big anyway. So yes, uh, it has changed uh, the outlook. More patience with people because yes, you know you, you are meeting different different kinds of people on the road. I'm very blessed that we meet a lot of uh, fine fine people. After all your travel, coming back to Malaysia after your travel. What do you now appreciate about Malaysia, something which you might have taken for granted before? What I appreciate more about Malaysia is, yeah, there's so many things. I used to take granted for, but not anymore. Uh, the convenience of the country, example, getting to the near, to the nearest petrol station or to the nearest food. Over when you're traveling, you can take miles, kilometers before you can reach your next destination. Petrol stations is not easy to find sometimes. Yes. These are the small little things I do need to appreciate. What about the people in Malaysia and the culture? In Malaysia, yes, even though we are of diverse nationality, I feel that we we have this uh, bonding among each other that we, we tolerance is the right word. 
tolerance and all that. So I look at people very differently now. What would be an advice to somebody who wants to also go on a travel? What would you advise them to do or think or believe before they start traveling? I would like to take the leave from Nike, just do it. But of course, you need to plan, you need to have uh, basic planning and all that. Because traveling three months is a not easy thing. Well, I, I travel alone, but I would advise people if you want to go with a friend or, or somebody you, you, you can go with, you need to have that patience, the discipline to travel together. Yeah. I know what you also learned, right? Become more patient and yes. become more disciplined as well, right? All right. And the latest news is that the Drip by Song has ended the Malaysian Book of Records. Congratulations! Now this is the end of the video. Tara Makase, Jim Balaki and bye-bye.